My name is Njeri Wangari. I am a Kenyan um, born uh, poet, author, uh, storyteller, and communications uh, um, uh, specialist based in Nairobi. I have um, uh, been a poet for quite a number of years and uh, also as a Global Voices contributor uh, for, wow, well over, well over 15 years now, began as a, a freelance contributor, then um, over the years uh, rose through the ranks to become the regional editor. And uh, that is the work that I still do. Uh, part of my work as a storyteller, I describe myself as a multifaceted storyteller because I do that from writing feature articles as a freelance journalist, as a, as a, as a children's writer, as, as a poet. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good to, to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great to see you too. Um, I interviewed you first in 2012 at the Nairobi Summit for Global Voices in very different circumstances. Oh, wow, that's sitting okay. On the lawn. Yeah. yeah, we were sitting <laughs> on the lawn. Um, yeah. Just, you, at the time you said that your main interest was the arts. Uh, how has this changed in the, the 12 years that have passed by, if at all? Um, so 12 years is a really long time and uh, my heart has always been in poetry at heart. I've always been a poet and uh, I have um, through the years just sought different ways of um, expressing that, whether it is on stage, whether it is um, in print or whether it is uh, digitally online. I have always, um, you know, known that I'm, I'm a poet first and foremost and, and a storyteller. So over the years, um, my uh, craft in, in writing poetry has remained, but I have found different forms of expression. Um, and that is from just being a spoken word artist and, and a poet to uh, uh, exploring more um, platforms as a as a writer, and I think that's the space that I have really grown in as a freelance as a as a as a journalist, uh, not just contributing to Global Voices, but also uh, being able to pitch articles and publish with various publications, including uh, Al Jazeera, including um, Coda Story, including um, quite a number of. Uh, uh, regional and, and global publications. So that's something that I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, that has happened over the period of the twelve years. I think also during that space, still in uh, exploring different forms of um, of uh, expression, uh, has been uh, the work that I have uh, been doing with the organization that I started called Afro Kids which is uh, looking at storytelling for children. And that's something that has grown uh, since then and more so in the last uh, two years. Uh, in the last uh, two years, I was able to uh, re-establish the, the organization and the work that we do by collaborating with a local, local organization called Baraza Media Lab. And so we have a monthly children's um, a book club that meets every month and we're able to invite um, uh, children's writers uh, and storytellers uh, to share with children um, African stories. That's something I'm, I'm really excited about. And, um, and more so because next year I will be launching my very first children's poetry book. So that's, uh, that's some exciting news. Um, and uh, I think over the that 12 uh, year period, I have also looked at uh, communications and as a writer from a communications perspective, working with different organizations in um, providing public relations and uh, strategic communication services. Great. And I remember your poem to open the summit it was called uh, When Things Change. How have things 
changed yes. uh, since you were uh, the birth of your second child just after that interview back in 2012. How was that? Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so our, our second born daughter, so we, we had a daughter, uh, she's called Wanda Wangare. She is now uh, 12 years old. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, Shortly after that interview, uh, a lot uh, have, has changed. And, you know, true to the poem, when things change, um, a lot, a lot happens when, when things change. And from the poem, um, my focus with that poem was really a lot on um, the changes that happened, that were happening in, uh, uh, you know, Kenya's capital city, Nairobi. And whereas, you know, at face value, it looked like a lot of the changes were positive, but there were very many, um, you know, uh, counter productive changes that were happening as a result of, you know, any modern city coming up very fast without um, uh, a lot of focus on the majority of the population who are from uh, poor backgrounds. However, personally, since the birth of our second born child, uh, we, um, four years later in 2016, had our last born, a boy, and he's now eight years old. And uh, so a lot of the a lot of the changes uh, personally have been um, around uh, my motherhood journey, just being up, uh, being there for them, and uh, and not just uh, showing up uh, as a as a mother, but also you know showing up for them as as uh, as someone who's passionate about storytelling. And so a lot of the work that I have been doing. Um, from my writing to the um, Afro Kids uh, work and the books and the and the kids book club has there has been a lot of focus and a lot of intentionality towards um, shaping their values, shaping their understanding of who they are, shaping their understanding of the world and their appreciation of their place in the world. So that is uh, what has been happening, and I think also. Um, in the last um, in the last two years, uh, actually, let me let me go back a bit because my wellness journey began um, some few years after that in 2017, and this was a year after the birth of our last born. Is when um, I began what it began as a fitness journey, just. Uh, you know, finding ways of of, of shedding the baby weight from uh, the birth of our third born. And that now over the years has become a journey into the wellness, not just exploring the health aspects of being active, running. I became a very active, uh, you know, became very active runner and true to our Kenyan heritage, uh, but not as a professional runner, but just as a recreational runner. And that sort of led me to a path towards Dif uh, exploring different forms of, of wellness from uh, running, from practicing mindful meditation to, um, uh, you know, exploring nature by going on uh, hiking expeditions. So that's something that uh, on the personal front, I have really um, grown in, in, in that more so internally in just um, understanding myself and, uh, um, uh, and, and my place in the world. Yes, I know I uh, I do follow your uh, Facebook and Instagram wellness pages. What, what, what's it called again on Facebook? It's called Kenyan Poet Wellness. Yes, yes, it's, uh, it's yes. well worth, I recommend it to everybody to follow. Fantastic. Oh, things. thank you. Okay. Moving on to the broader picture again, um, I'm wondering what the challenges are for Kenya today. Have they changed what, and in what ways? Um, you talked at length about them last time, 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so there have been, there are currently very many challenges um, that are both political um, and, and, and economic. Um, I'll start with the, I'll start with the economic and this, uh, has been a culmination of, um, you know, 
legacies, political um, legacies that have uh, led us to the place where we are, just policies that the government has enforced and uh, have ended up having an economic uh, impact on um, on every day on 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 uh, on, the, on the citizenry. Um, but the biggest challenge that we are having right now is um, is is economic led by political um, decisions and um, and uh, and policies that have been put in place. Um, so in the last, so just from the time that um, the you know the current president was 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 elected, he inherited. Um, a, a government that was uh, heavily in debt uh, because of the the infrastructural um, projects that the previous administration had taken off had taken up, and this was by um, the former president Uhuru Kenyatta. He uh, and his administration went on a uh, uh, you know huge infrastructural um changes and and getting into into debt and a lot of these um projects were not well informed there was a uh you know they became controversial because there was a lot of um corruption and uh, whereas the money was borrowed from uh, from uh, from china a lot of that money ended up in people's pockets and so the projects that were supposed to, the money that was earmarked for those projects did not, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the common Malanchi did not, I mean, the common Kenyan did not get to benefit from that. And now the current president inherited that debt. And uh, whereas the prudent thing would be for the administ current administration to cost, cost cut, diff look for different ways of cost cutting, that uh, actually has, you know, the reverse has happened. So the current government immediately took power, went on a spending spree, introducing different um, positions that were unconstitutional. And what has that, what that has done, because the country, remember, is still paying its debt. So what the administration, political administration decided to do was to heavily tax Kenyans and that uh, heavily taxation even went into basic commodities that and, and it got to a point uh, this year it reached a point where Kenyans felt this cannot continue and so that is why you I don't know if you've been following the news but there were uh, protests that uh, erupted throughout the country um, first, it was because of the financial bill that was supposed to that have been proposed that would have um, imposed more taxes even on um on, on basic commodities such as uh as 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 food and 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 um and fuel and so kenyans protested and uh, that uh financial bill uh was withdrawn however uh these protests uh one you know were matched with how the government decided to respond was by silencing dissidents. And that is what has been happening. The biggest challenge right now has been the, um, the government uh, abduction of, uh, of, uh, of um, activists. Um, and uh, because a lot of these uh, protests were led by um, the young generation of, of, of Kenyans, a lot of um, them have... Um, are being are being persecuted because of that. So one of the biggest challenges that we're having as as a country is that the political dispensation is uh, is very adamant about um, they will continue. They're not going to do any cost cuttings within the you know within the government offices or for the administration. Continue to heavily tax Kenyans, and uh, Kenyans have gotten to a point where they said we cannot we cannot continue like this because the cost of living has has gone high. The um, uh, the, a lot of the disgruntled youth have no jobs. And so those are the biggest challenges that we are facing as a country. It sounds very familiar. I'm sure a lot of our Global Voices community uh, would be able to identify with a lot of those problems. Yes. Moving from there to um, what we've talked about previously, uh, the role of the internet, which has certainly changed a lot in the last 12 years, and um, 
I was just wondering what your thoughts were about social media and its future in the broader sense, you know, such as blogging and, and uh, play, you know, all uh, such as Global Voices. Uh, Kevin, I am not as optimistic as I was 12 years ago. Had you asked me that question 12 years ago, I would have been all um, uh, just excited and very optimistic yeah. about um, the role of, of, of social media in uh, particularly the work that uh, Global Voices has been doing and even the work that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of us, uh, you know, have been passionate about um, speaking truth to power advocating for internet uh, rights and and the and the common freedoms um unfortunately um we have continued to see the system systematic takeover of social media spaces by um big corporations and here i am you know as i'm as i'm you know talking about this um, twitter which i totally refuse to call the name the new name that they renamed themselves i totally refuse to use that name because i don't recognize it anymore but it's just a very good example and when you think about um how um to sort of bring this home to kenya how that became has become you know, always been used as a tool for um, expression, for a, a tool for accountability and a tool for uh, truth. That is no longer the case. So Twitter has become a space that I no longer recognize because um, what initially was set up as a very democratic, um, we'd call it, um, uh, a, you know, a, a town square where you're able to have conversations, honest conversations and um, critical conversations about the state of the nation. And, you know, uh, there have been numerous stories and uh, coverage of Kenyans on Twitter and how they've been able to use that particular, you know, part of the social media space to call yeah. leadership to accountability. So right now, as, as a country, we are experiencing, um, you know, um, just uh, blatant um, uh, infringement of these rights uh, to us as Kenyans. As um, late as last week, um, the Kenyan government blocked Telegram. And for a period of about a week or so, we could not access Telegram, uh, the social media um, this channel. And the reason that the government gave, and this wasn't... Um, Initially, the you know the government tried to deny, but what happened is that um, the directive was given to the tele to the telecom companies, and you know initially they tried to deny, but eventually the truth came out, and so the story changed into the government saying that oh um, this was a t time during which the national um, examinations uh, were happening, and we noticed that a lot of the of the candidates who were doing the national um primary examinations were using telegram as a you know to solicit uh, you know to share leakage of the of of the exams uh, and so that's the reason why we blocked but you know that's you know that's very suspect because there are different uh, more effective ways that the you know the government could have gone about um dealing with uh, exam cheating and not necessarily blocking a whole channel for 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 the country for that period of time so when i uh, look at the future of social media um you know not just from a local perspective but also from a global perspective I, 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 I foresee a lot of gloom. Like the the social media spaces is, is is becoming, uh, is no longer. It's changing from what we have known it to be as a space where, uh, people can have honest conversations and hold truth to power. That especially in the <clears throat> being in the age of um. Of, um, of of fake news and uh, the attack on on, on, on on media and on truth. Uh, unfortunately, um, social media spaces are becoming uh, tools that can be now be used for nefarious reasons. Uh, my thoughts are about social media and its future. Um, 
my thoughts are that the role of social media and the and the, and the, the important role that it has continued to play for uh you know journalists like us activists like us and uh, and uh, people who are keen about and intent intended on uh, holding truth to power social media is becoming a very intolerant place for that and in the future you know activists will have to find different avenues in order to do that but certainly social media will be a very hostile space for that in the future yeah um i'm wondering how you see the the continuing role of uh, citizen journalism especially given what appears to be a, a failure of traditional journalism to do such things as hold you know truth to power and to really show people what's happening and counter misinformation and the like uh, and also for people like our community of global voices uh, how we can what, what future we might have Given Global Voices has managed to survive 20 years, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, so I see the role of citizen journalism and for communities such as Global Voices to continue to be a very important one because uh, with, with so much uncertainty and so much... Um, and, and the disproliferation of information... You need sources of truthful information, and and those sources are becoming very far and in between. So the role that um, not just citizen journalism generally, but also organisations and communities such as Global Voices is to continue being that beacon of, you know, of it's sort of like the true north that people can know that whenever I go to this site, the kind of information that. Uh, the news stories that I'm reading, the information that I am reading can be trusted. And the beauty about um, organizations such as Global Voices, you know, looking at what um, the, you know, uh, traditional media um, has been going through, the models that they have been uh, using and a lot of them relying on advertising for survival have failed. And that is why you're finding a lot of uh, traditional media organizations crumbling because they failed to... Um, a lot of them failed to uh, redefine and and uh, to redefine themselves and and to look at you know how media is changing generally and where the audiences are going and uh, and um, and disrupt themselves. So I see citizen journalism playing uh, an important role because with the collapse of uh, a lot of the traditional media outlets and also with the influence from. Uh, you know um, the the piper that pays. <laughs> um, then uh, you know the work of citizen journalists uh, will uh, will be will be important. But uh, unlike um, just individual citizen journalists uh, who need structures around them that can safeguard their uh, you know their safety, can be able to. Um, uh, provide that uh, form of support, whereas yes, individually, um, citizen journalists uh, will continue to play a very important role. But I think being part of a community that now um, they're able to have a collective voice and with organizations such as Global Voices will, uh, in the future, you know, play a more important role than uh, than than ever. Fantastic. Okay. Right. Been a pleasure. Kevin, it's, been, it's been great I, talking I to video you. I, I love the photo. It, it was a pleasure anyway. <laughs> okay. Bye for now. All right. Take care.